Uh, so next is from Sam D- D- Schneider. And the subject is, could Heyman save AEW? Hey, K100 crew. I want to ask you guys, if you give him the opportunity, could Paul Heyman fix AEW? If Tony Khan was to, was to give complete control to Paul, to just being able to fire talent and actually be in charge of booking the matches and shows, is it possible that he could do more good than bad to the product? I know it is a hypothetical situation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go read the rest of this, okay? Dude, I mean, Heyman would probably do a better job than Tony, okay? But he's not coming to AEW, all right? So forget it. Just, it's, it's, that's like a typical, like, smart mark email. Like, you know, could, could, could Paul Heyman save AEW? That, I, I bet you that guy, like, follows what culture and, like, all those other <laughs> stupid, you know? Uh, next is from Steve Haig. Subject is impersonations. Hey, K100 crew, I recently saw a video of Karrion Cross do a great Jesse Ventura impersonation impression on Chris Van, Van Velt. Chris Van, is that his name? No, Chris Van Vliet. Vliet, he spelled it wrong. He spelled Chris Van Velt. Uh, should I suspend this guy for spelling Chris Van Vliet's name wrong? <laughs> for misinformation? Nah, we'll give, we'll give him a break. Yeah. I just want to know, was there anybody out there that did good impressions in the locker room in your day? Um, yeah, a bunch of guys did good impressions in our locker room. I did good impressions. I do a great impression of Howard Finkel. Do you want to hear my Howard? I've done it before. Do you want to hear my Howard Finkel impersonation? Yeah, after you do the Howard Finkel, do your Kermit the Frog impression. Go ahead. Oh, jeez. I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to do the Howard Finkel now. Oh, come on. Oh, man. You know, you just insult. That was, a, that was an insult, and that insult might cause harm. Okay. Wow. Now I'm going to do it. From the Department of Corrections in Cobb County, Georgia, weighing 357 pounds, the big boss man. <laughs> It's not bad, right? Give no, me the one. Stand up and rise for the Soviet Union national flag. That one. Uh, no, I don't do that one. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Volkov asks you to please rise for the singing of the Russian national anthem. <laughs> Bro, there's never been anything like that. <laughs> Bro, there's really nothing. That, like, honestly, the, there's really the simplicity of professional wrestling that I grew up with that was so great is like the, when Volkov would ask the fans to please rise for the singing of the Russian national anthem and just a smattering of booze that right. would just start coming from the crowd. Like such very simple heat, you know, like a, and then when he would start singing. Oh, <laughs> All right. Um, Oh, this is interesting right here. Uh, this is from Ick5150. This subject is random. Sup, K100 squad. Conan, any regrets? Disc. I don't. His reg- Disco. A- the- yeah. Go ahead. Disco. The Boogie Knights. Who was the Marty and who was the Sean? Feeny. Which do you prefer? Disco Inferno, DISQO, Hip Hop Inferno, Cowboy Gilberti, the New York, the NYG TNA, or current Twitter. Opinion, Maggot Inferno. This guy calls me Maggot Inferno. Mm. <sighs> Let's suspend him. This is this, this email is See what happens. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. done, Ick. Spend him for two weeks. Two weeks. Because this, this whole email was atrocious. You know, it's, I think, it's grammatically Conan, the, the the picture on the screen. Uh, Ick fifty one fifty here wanted to know if you re- if you have any regrets about wearing this uh, garb to the ring on TV. Absolutely Why would you not. have regrets about that? We were the it's, filthy animals. It's phenomenal. Like that's something you were wearing, like in like uh, Dre's After Hours in 1999, right. back in Vegas. Like, I was talking to Ruben Police Scanner Zamora, who lives in Las Vegas, and he's doing like Uber, and he was telling me that Dre's is still around, which I didn't even know. And he said like every night they have like a different rap act. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the club, but not the After yeah. Hours club. Okay. Um, Oh, did, oh, by the way, I just got a message. Did you book uh, Kenny for Thursday? Joe? Kenny I didn't, Bowling, I didn't realize I was muted. Yeah, yeah, Thursday, yeah. So okay, cool. oh, we're going to do Lucha tomorrow. <clears throat> oh, cool. All right, Larry, cool. So that it doesn't interfere. Perfect. All right. Um, next is uh, from an Ick5152 weeks on that. All right. Uh, subject from Tuner O, oh, and the subject is music. From El Hijo del Disco, all the way from the West Texas. What's up, K-Dog, the great Disco Inferno, and Sai Joe? <laughs> this question is for Conan, because I'm pretty sure D.I. and Joe will probably not know who I'm talking about. Conan, have you heard of the narco-corrido singer Peso Pluma, 
who recently beat heavy hitters for today's generation like Bad Bunny, Drake, Taylor Swift, etc., as the most listened artist globally on Spotify. The new generation of narco corrido singers look like SoundCloud rappers, but not going to lie, Peso Pluma songs are pretty catchy. What's your thoughts on his songs? That's if you've heard them. Stay healthy, K Dog. Hope you find a kidney donor soon. And Disco, keep up the marks on Twitter. I find it hilarious. Joe, uh, sigh, Joe. You, you're cooler than KG and Billy. All right, go ahead. Well, you know, it's like being the least corrupt Biden. Right. Uh, Conan, Peso Pluma, any thoughts? Yeah, super popular guy does have does have catchy beats because he's doing narco corrido basically. What is music. what is narco corrido? I'm about like to that. tell you music about the drug culture and the drug dealers and all that, you know. And where sometimes well they'll they'll call they'll have um, songs named after some of the the capos. Very Let me popular. ask you, what were the two factions <laughs> now? <laughs> what what are the names of the two biggest uh, uh, narco? So two, two biggest cartels in in, in uh, Mexico right now. Uh, Cartel Elise. de Sinaloa. And, Which one? Uh, Cartel de Sinaloa, Chapo's old. The Sinaloa, team. right? Yeah, it's the Sinaloa and, cartel, right? De, de Jalisco, right? And then, of course, uh, Nuevo Jalisco cartel. Right? Yeah. Which one's the one that's a new and more violent one that we talked about? Yeah, Jalisco. Jalisco, right, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're like killing. Yeah. Bro, you, me and me and my, my buddy that I work with at work, uh, he's, he's born in... Um, uh, he was born in Mexico, right? So he's always in, like, we always look at all the narcos so, like on Twitter and everything. Bro, you gotta see these guys. They're dressed like 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 special ops military guys. Like, they got all the military gear and stuff, and like, like they, they look like like, like, uh, you know, like like fighters from the, the movie, the, the video game Halo. Mm. You know, like, they got like all modern, like, it's like, they got so much money, it's ridiculous, you know? Um, so the next one is from – got three left here. It's got a lot of mail this week, by the way, obviously. Uh, from P. Yash, and the subject is wrestling commentary. Boys, hope all is well with the crew at K100. I'm curious about your thoughts on Mauro Ronaldo. I thought he had excitement to wrestling while watching on TV just like Vince McMahon, Gorilla Monsoon, JR, and Tony. I can't stand Michael Cole and find him boring and unlikable, but it seems like everyone else is a fan. Corey Graves is another bozo who does absolutely nothing for me when it comes to entertainment. It doesn't even come close to Bobby the Brain, who, in my opinion, is the greatest to ever do it. Bro, I'm just going to sidebar here. Bro, that's not a knock on Corey Graves for not coming close to Bobby the Brain. All right? Bobby the Brain was a legend. Yeah. One of the best ever. Come on. It's like, that's, a, that's an atrocious criticism. The only person I can see having potential would be Pat McAfee. It would have been nice to see him and Moral work together. What are your thoughts on wrestling commentary from the past and present? Thanks. That's from Patrick Yash, Yash's shit. Um, it's not as good as it used to be, obviously, because like guys like, you know, Jesse and Vince together was my favorites because they were, there's a lot of iconic wrestling announcers that are just from the past, right? The, the con, the announcers today are not iconic. All right. Um, but they're not, you know, I, I I I was critical of Corey Graves for a while because I just didn't get him like you are you a heel or you a babyface you're like well, what what is your cuz he would like go in and out of heel and babyface commentary back and forth and I'm like I just this I'm like why is you know just kind of confusing Michael Cole is a is a narrator that narrates stories he's not as good as JR was at it cuz JR had brought, brought more emotion or just like his emotion verbally sounded better. He had a kind of a Texas drawl to his voice, and yeah, they you know just I don't know. He's more of a character than Michael Cole was, but you know Corey Graves has had a lot of great commentary in a lot of the angles that are going right now, especially like the stuff he's been doing to get like Dom and Ray's angle over. Like like Corey Graves has been like like been really good on the mic, narrating a lot of a lot of the storylines late, lately. You know, and he's just, he's been, and like maybe when the storylines aren't good and you're just trying to get yourself over and throwing one liners out there, you don't notice. But like when there's a good storyline, it's like I have, I've not noticed like the commentary. I just felt like the commentary has been fine, which is good. Like the commentary is not supposed to take over and like be the most important thing. But like when you're listening to the commentary and you're watching the angles, they're not like saying stuff that you're, you're confused or anything. They're just being very basic and like, like the funniest thing was there was a there was a good spot where uh Corey there was um 
the, the what you call it the uh what do they call the um the judgment day the judgment day are in the ring and i think maybe they're across the ring from maybe kevin like i, I don't know maybe, maybe might have been the bloodline or something I, I, you know who or another heel another faction and and dom being like the punk kid like got in somebody's face and like before the, like to ignite everything dom punched a guy in the face Hmm. Right, and then they started brawling, right? And Corey Graves had a great line in that commentary. He's like, he's like, Dom just had like a flashbacks of the like he was supposed to be from prison, right? He goes, Dom just had flashbacks from the yard. Find the biggest guy and punch him in the mouth. Right. <laughs> That's like, great. bro, and stuff. So like, good. He's nailed like a lot of really good commentary like that, and, like you know, in telling these stories and help. He's hey, he's assisted in getting these guys over because sometimes commentary can ruin commentary can, can like kill an angle they've not killed anything they've actually enhanced all the angles so i would say i would say the commentary in this show has been pretty good so far at lately would you agree with that yeah i didn't like uh, Corey at the beginning but you got to remember he used to be a wrestler and he was thrown into the deep end of commentary commentary is not easy i've done it all my life it is right. not easy at all just because you're a good talker doesn't mean you're a good commentator correct but i think he's found his way now and i think he's hilarious michael cole's kind of one-dimensional but he's serviceable Nothing like Jr. who would turn up the emotion and scream and get into it, and he, Jr. was just one of a kind. And right. I like, he, I was big, big, big fan of just the body of a turd. Right. I thought that was great, and I absolutely loved Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan, bro. That was money, and there's nobody like that. Nobody even close. Pat McAfee, right. awesome for the little time he's been in. Right. And I got to hit him up because I hit him up to come on the show and he didn't answer. So I'm going to hit him up again. Mm-hmm. All right. Next is some Ryan Damone and some to CM Punk chants. Are you guys surprised at lack of AW crowds chanting CM Punk's name? When he left WWE, there were constant chants. Do you think he finally had lost his goodwill to the wrestling audience? And thanks for your time. Um, no. First of all, when Punk was on AEW, he would get the CM Punk chants. Mm-hmm. But, the, but it's kind of weird. Mean, I, I think they mean after he left, right? I'll say this. I'll say this. Is that what they meant, George? Yeah. yeah. Why, why doesn't me, WWE audience change it? Let me, let, me, let, me tell, let me tell you. Let me tell you why. When he left AEW. Let me tell me tell you why. And this my I I, I think this is a good good uh, logical answer to this, is that when the WWE was going through this period of time where everybody was like couldn't stand the creative, fans that would hate watch the show, go on the internet every week and like bury the show and just start visiting us. Would actually go to the live events and troll the show, like CM Punk. They did chant CM Punk. They did cheer the heel. They they would troll the show. Okay. Well, then all of a sudden the pandemic came around, right? And then there weren't any shows, and there weren't any fans, and a new company started, AEW. And AEW started before the the you know, the but. The fans that were now trolling the WWE product at the live shows, now they weren't going to the live shows anymore. They're just showing up and going to the AEW show, the, the new product. So you didn't see that dynamic of like the fans hate watching the show, showing up live and hate watching the product and trolling the product. Like doing the chance that, that kill the angles and stuff. And think, you know, I, I, I don't know. Would you, would you agree with that? That might be a, be a reason. That, but yeah. I also think like I stated previously, when he left WWE, he left very hot. And when he left AEW, he didn't leave as hot. And I right. think that's why they weren't chanting his name. But there is some... Well, well then, for, for example, he, he came back to AEW, yeah. and he didn't come back hot. Remember, it's kind of lame. He was fighting Lee Moriarty. He was fighting Lee... You know, so, so it didn't, like... He didn't have that... There's kind of, like, almost disappointment to the fans. Like, yo, that they weren't chanting his name oh, because he came back and they didn't, like, do much of the ratings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like we know that we know there's zero chance of them winning. So yeah, right. I thought that the way if that was his decision, I think that was not in hindsight, he may even admit it one day, but who knows? Next is from Sky Flame 09 in the Subdiz entrance seems. The LAX and Wolfpack themes are some of the best hip hop entrance tracks of all time. Do you guys have any insight on how the music is created and do the wrestlers have any input? <laughs> Whoa. No, we no we don't we have no clue how the music is created, right? Yeah. Also, do wrestlers have the choice to not use a theme if they think it's basura? What does basura mean? Trash. Okay. All right. So, so what, what's your answer to this? The Wolfpack theme was because 
me and Nash had heard this song on the radio we liked. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to use that beat to make the Wolfpack theme. So that came from a song that was very popular back in the 90s. The LAX theme was, I went into a production a studio here in in, um, in San Diego with a guy that does rap music um, for some of the top groups here in San Diego. And I just said, this is the beat I want. I want you to add this. I want you to add that. And I just sat with him until he got what I wanted. Mm. Interesting. Less in the mailbag. Enjoy the rest of the show. Boom.